What's going on, legend? This is Angus. Thank you so much for stopping by to click on this video. Obviously, you did for a reason. That's because you give a shit about this topic. So, really excited to be dropping some knowledge, some insights, some science, and all sorts into that cranium of yours in terms of our topic today, which is society is getting fatter, right? And we're in a new age of obesity. So, what I want to be covering over these next three parts of this video is basically, well, Kind of, I guess, comparing the science and the stats of where we were at back then compared to where we are now. Um, why are we actually fatter now than what we were back then? And um, basically just the truth behind it all in a summary so that you have some take home points to understand why this is happening. Because if we look around us, right, there are some pretty alarming sort of shit going on, right? Like we live in the information age. Right. So in other words, for you to be able to get lean, learn how to fucking master riding a bike, learn how to fix your own fucking tap that's broken, um, to be able to even like fix a flat tire, like anything you want to learn how to do, you can pretty much search YouTube, Google, whatever it may be on the internet to be able to find out the answer to your problem, right? So we live in the information age, yet people suck shit at being able to apply themselves, right? And you'd think that because this is the case that we would be seeing trending going down in terms of where our obesity rates are heading and that sort of thing and where our health is at. But nope, we have been consistently going up since 1976. So time to break this down and um, yeah, let's get stuck into it. So point one is that Basically in 1976, right, this is when obesity levels started to actually climb, right? It started back then, so we're talking, well, right now it's 2019, so that is about oh, 45-ish years ago, right? So that's when it all started to happen. So a common thought, basically, is that, um, <laughs> that we eat more calories now than what we did back then. But upon doing some research and looking at the stats, what's actually interesting is that, well, this truth, this truth is actually wrong, right? Get this. Um, right now at the moment, the average person, the average adult in society consumes about 2,130 calories, right? Whereas back then in 1976, in terms of when obesity levels started to really climb, right? Get this. They actually ate 2,590 calories on average back then. What does that tell you, right? That's interesting. So in other words, back then they actually ate more calories than um, what we do now. Even taking into account the fact that now as well, we have all the information that we need at our, at our fingertips to solve our problems. Yet back then, well, <laughs> it was a bit of a different story. this leads then into is well why are we fatter right now one of the points that I'm sure you're probably thinking is that well um, there's likely been a decline in manual labor right in terms of jobs like now we've got technology replacing a lot of old-school jobs um, you know like less and less on the tools sort of action because a lot of machines and stuff like that um, you know are doing jobs nope that's not the reason um, we can look at the sort of point that is that for a lot of us we uh, like there's less physical exercise and movement in terms of the fact that well like if we're hungry rather than going out for a walk to go and get the shit we need we do we, we, we have things like click and collect in terms of coals and that sort of thing um, we've got all that uber eats where some you know <laughs> filipino brother or whatever jumps on his little push bike picks up our shit for us and drops it off to our house or obviously the same but except in an actual car so it's like yes we kind of do less exercise to an extent but then that's not the main contributing reason because well the exercise that you do on a day to day and you like in terms of your exercise activity thermogenesis only has a very small impact upon metabolism and whether your body is going to store fat or not yes it has a contributing impact upon how well you retain and stabilize muscle but it's overall nutrition choices that will account the most for whether someone is going to actually stay lean and healthy or whether they're going to lose fat so exercise comes into it yes but then another point that I know you're probably thinking is, well, fuck, we consume more sugar, don't we? Well, 
here's what's interesting, right? Is that for a lot of us, we think that sugar is addictive. Yeah, I used to think that it was addictive until I looked at the science. And science actually shows us that it isn't actually sugar that's addictive, right? Because if it was, well then you would be going over to the shops, over to Old Mate Coles, Old Mate Woolies, you'd be buying a one kg bag of sugar, whether it be coconut sugar, palm sugar, fucking like uh, raw sugar, um, stevia sugar, just whatever it may be, right? And that you would be able to bury your face into it and go, oh, la la la, and just eat it, right? Whereas you and I both know it's not the case. You'd probably stop it, maybe a few tablespoons, and you'd be like, fuck, like, I'm done. You see what I mean? So it's not the actual sugar that's addictive, it's hyper palatable foods. So where, like, uh, the company of whoever it is that has made the hyper palatable food in specific, right? A hyper palatable food is something that uh, has a perfect ratio of that sweet to savory to crunchy to denseness to whatever like it's a perfect marriage of all those things so that we get that taste bud party in our mouth when we eat it we associate dopamine to eating it meaning we're excited to eat more of it because it brings us pleasure and therefore we buy more of it right so it's like we actually buy less actual sugar than at pretty much any point in history, right? Obviously, like, we're not taking into, in, into account here, like, Stone Age and shit like that, right? But, like, we we have basically, in terms of sales of hyper-palatable foods, they've been skyrocketing ever since 1976, right? So, it's not sugar. And take into these things account, well, what we need to look at is the truth. In terms of dropping some actual truth on you, right? I'm going to be hitting you with some dope as fuck stats, all right? So we love milk, right? But the thing is, is that we buy half as much milk uh, in terms of like comparing old school stats to where we are now. We buy half as much milk, but we buy five times more yogurt products. We buy three times more ice cream and we're 39 times more likely to be eating dessert on the daily than what we were back then in 1976, right? Fucking mind blown. Um, we buy 50% less eggs, irrespective of source, whether it's like cage-free or grass-fed or you know, where the chicken's been worshipped or whatever, we buy 50% less eggs, but we buy uh, a third more cereals and um, like twice as many like cereal bars and all that sort of stuff that we see in the actual um, uh, package stuff aisles at Coles or Woolworths, right? Um, and sync with this as well, we buy half the amount of potatoes that we used to buy, yet we buy three times the amount of chips and crisps um, in comparison. And really in essence, like what this is, like showing us, right, is that now more than ever, marketing companies know how to override our willpower to get us to buy their shit, right? To keep us hungry, but also to keep us coming back for more. Because for a lot of us, we know that, well, yeah, like, <laughs> we have these scenarios where it's like, oh yeah, like, you know, I, I really should be eating more fruits and vegetables or yeah, I need to start eating more of this. Like we know this stuff, but yeah, we don't follow through with doing it. Now, this leads me to my summary, which is the fact that, well, it's that we give a shit less about quality of food now more than we used to back then. So it's like, although we are, actually consuming um, like less calories than what we were as a society back then, it shows that our quality of food choices are getting shitter and worse. And then as a result of that, in terms of like where our actual stats are now, like what is so surprising is that two out of three adults are obese or overweight or hate their physique and have body image issues, right? And then that's also continuing to rise, like those stats were from 2015, right? So obviously now it's 2019, so it's been going up ever since, right? More than one out of four kids are overweight and are having um, you know, issues. So it's like, as you can see, this goes beyond just calories, right? Like, well, we will just, as I said earlier in the video, like seem to think that it's because, yeah, we eat more calories. Yeah, as I showed you before, like we actually ate more calories back then than what we do now. 
yeah? So in other words, if you can take anything from this video, it's the fact that you need to get your shit together with eating better quality food. Prioritize getting in more fruits and vegetables. Prioritize moving more and stuff, yes. But it's like for you to be healthy and give your body any reason to need to let go of body fat, like you need to be getting in better quality stuff and validating why your body should actually let go of fat and to get you into a healthier weight range. Because what a lot of us seem to forget is that fat tissue stored on your body is exactly that, stored energy that your body is holding on to to keep you safe, to hold on to just in case you enter into, into a state of famine or food restriction, or whatever it may be. All right, remember that's how our bodies are hardwired. It doesn't give a shit about you getting lean. It doesn't give a shit about you trying to get, um, you know, like having visible abs and hashtag booty and whatever, right? So it's like calories matter, absolutely, but health is what matters most. And if you're not on point with getting in sufficient, um, you know, fiber and micronutrients and stuff like that on the daily while getting in a decent amount of protein throughout your day today, well then it's like, yeah, welcome to why this sort of shit is going on. Welcome to why we're in a new age of obesity and why like <laughs> we just, yeah, in the sort of scenario that we are because this isn't just happening in Australia. This is happening in US. This is happening in Europe. This is happening in Asia. Like we need to be like the sort of people that are like, not just trying to learn more shit and gather more information, but we need to actually be consistent with applying what it is that we actually know. And I hope that if you're someone that's watching this video and you're a hoarder of information, like please do me the due diligence and start applying the shit that you see me teaching. Don't just watch stuff like this and go, oh yeah, that was pretty cool to learn, like fuck yeah, like apply this shit because that's how you're gonna change your life and that is how you're gonna be able to be the person who is a role model for those around you so that, that way, well, we don't see history continue to repeat into the next generation and beyond. So do me a favor, if you love this video in terms of the insight that I gave, let's keep the conversation going below. Drop some questions or anything in the comments below. I'd love to keep this combo going with you. And um, if you're a returning subscriber, give us some feedback, like the video, I'd love to have that from you. And obviously if you're new to the channel, um, hey, we'd love to have you hang around, check out my uploads and stuff in the channel, check out some other stuff. I don't only just post content, I post lots of other food videos and all sorts in terms of, yeah, well, what I'm about as a business and a coach and someone who just loves the game of life and food as a person. So, um, yeah, feel free to follow and check out some of my um, social media links below, check out some freebies and stuff like that. And if you're open to, yeah, well, like let's say for example that you feel that you're fighting a losing battle in terms of that which is your relationship with food and your weight and stuff like that, hey, your boy Angus over here is a wizard and fucking Yoda, Rick Sanchez, Pokemon master at helping people around the world sort that sort of shit out. So if you're open to help, check out some of the links below and um, yeah, hey, it might even turn out that coaching could be a good fit for you as well as part of um, yeah my online service. But once again, big love. Thanks for watching. See you next time in the tubes. Take care.